whatever you are, do not break the stillness of this moment. For this is a time of mystery. A time when imagination is free and moves forward swiftly, silently. This is the haunting hour. Remember Hugo Carteret? Well, of course you do. The brilliant criminologist and charming gentleman who had such a wonderful flair for solving crimes which carried a hint of the macabre and savored of the supernatural. He died back in the 20s. And they say that everybody from the 400 of Park Avenue to the 400,000 of the Bowery and Hell's Kitchen came to his funeral. Anyway, Hugo Carter had left his memoirs. And the very first chapter deals with an infamous crime which in June of the year 1922 threw all of New York City into an uproar of horror. Such was the case of the Lonesome Corpse. Greystone Park used to be the private estate of old Caleb Greystone, eccentric recluse and, incidentally, millionaire many times over. When Caleb died, he willed the estate to the city of New York. The city fathers, properly grateful, promptly converted the estate into a park. It was public in that it was open to the public. But it had a private look, because a 15-foot wall of polished stone completely surrounded it. One day, back in June of 22, a big car drove up to the only entrance. In the back seat of the limousine was William Marsden, wealthy lawyer and executor of the Greystone Estate, and he had come to inspect the ground. You wait here in the car, Edward. Yes, Mr. Marsden. Will you be long, sir? I don't think that's any of your business. I pay you to show for me around, not to ask me questions. Yes, I was only bringing up the fact that it's getting dark, and you said you had to be at the plaza by nine. I'm perfectly able to take care of my own business, Edward. I'll mind mine, and you mind yours. Now, you wait here in the car till I'm through in the park. Understand? Yes, Mr. Marsden. <laughs> Suppose that big shot lawyer, Marston, disappeared. Think his chauffeur had something to do with it? I don't know, Tom. I don't get it. He tells his chauffeur to wait, walks into this here park, and never comes out. Chauffeur hears a scream inside the park, and that's all. Ah, uh, you scared too easy, Tom. Ah, uh, nine that nice. Just broke my shovel. Well, I have to go over to the tool house and get another one. But, Joe... The tool house is way over the other end of the park. So what? It's getting dark. And it ain't healthy to be in this place after dark. Let's knock off, Joe. We can finish digging these flower beds tomorrow. If we knock off, we'll both be looking for a new gardener job tomorrow. Andrew, the superintendent told us to finish up tonight. And that's what we got to do. Look, Joe, I, don't leave me. I got an idea there's something running around this park we don't know nothing about. When I think of that lawyer, Marston, I... <laughs> so, you see the ghost now, huh, Tom? <laughs> well, there ain't no ghost or nothing else that can scare Joe Donetti. You wait for me here. <laughs> and if you see a boogeyman, well, just offer him a drink and uh, ask him to stick around, eh? <laughs> Headquarters, Sergeant Hogan speaking. What? You saw a light floating around in Greystone Park? What kind of a light? Purple, eh? 
You see anything else? What? A white ghost walking down the park road, eh? All right, all right, don't get excited. We'll send a squad car to investigate right away. Hello, Sergeant Hogan. Oh, hello, Mr. Carteret. Miss Smith. Oh, I see you know my special assistant. Of course he does, Hugo. The sergeant and I are old friends. We met at the policeman's Oh, ball. Keeping you busy these days, Sergeant? Busy? Mr. Carteret, we sure need your help in this case. The commissioner's going nuts inside. And you ought to hear the double talk coming in over this wire. <laughs> this Greystone Park business has got the people living around there walking around in circles. They're seeing everything from the king of the pixies to the ghost of my great-grandmother. I don't wonder. I've been working up a few shivers about it myself. Is Commissioner Williams in, Sergeant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go right into his office, Mr. Carter. He's expecting you. Thank you. Here comes another screwball report. <laughs> Come on, Ann. Police headquarters. Sergeant Hogan speaking. What? You heard some kind of animal howling in Greystone Park? What kind of animal? So, Joe Donati left you to get a new shovel, eh, Farrell? And then a little later, you heard a scream. Yes, sir. It came from far off, and it must have been Joe. Oh, oh hello, Hugo. Miss Smith? Commissioner? Yes. Well, I guess that'll be all, Farrell. Stay pretty close to home, though. We may need you later. Yes, sir. Oh, that was Tom Farrell, the gardener. Hard to get anything out of him. He's so jittery. He's convinced there's some kind of murdering thing running around loose in that park. So is Mars and the chauffeur. And I'm convinced they're both telling straight stories. I trust you searched the park thoroughly, Commissioner. Oh, of course I have, Hugo. At a detail, practically scrape every foot of the area with a fine-tooth comb. And you found nothing, Commissioner Williams? Nothing. Until yesterday morning. Oh, you have a clue? Yes, if you want to call it that, Hugo. But, well, it's almost incredible. Fantastic on the face of it. Hugo, we need your help badly. We're at our wits' ends down here, and, and I haven't even asked. Well, naturally, Commissioner, I'd be delighted. There's a touch of the macabre and supernatural here that I find very interesting. Don't you, Ann? I'm not so sure. Now then, Commissioner, you said something about a clue. Yes. Donetti, the missing gardener, was wearing hobnail shoes. The road was soft in the recent rain. And we were able to trace his footsteps as far as they went. What do you mean, as far as they went? I mean those footprints stopped dead in the middle of the road. What? Right next to Caleb Greystone's tomb in the center of the park. It was just as though some giant bird of prey picked Donetti up and carried him off. But, my dear Williams, that doesn't make sense. I know it doesn't, but it happened. Donetti couldn't vanish like that, unless he had wings. Maybe he does have wings now. <laughs> can't get those footprints out of my mind. They interest me. They scare me. In fact, I think I'll stop in at Greystone Park and have a look at them. You mean now? Yes. Oh, but Hugo, it's midnight, and there's something dangerous roaming around in that park. Something deadly. Why not wait until tomorrow in the daylight? Because the things that happen in Greystone Park, Anne, seem to happen at night. <laughs> Serene Greystone Park. The place that people just hate to leave. You should have let me drop you at your apartment, Anne. This is no place for a girl. Oh, no, Mr. Carter. And I'm going right with you. Well, here's the gate. It's the only entrance or exit. Let's try it. There. Neatly locked with a heavy iron chain and padlock. The police want to keep people out, and I think it's a wonderful idea. Either that or they want to keep something in. The thing in this park couldn't be stopped by chains or padlocks. Well, they're not going to stop us either. Here, Anne, I'll boost you up to the top of this stone wall and climb up myself. Come on. Uh, there you are. How's the view up there? Oh, lovely. Now then, Mr. Carteret, let's see what kind of a second story man you are. I haven't done this. I was a boy. <sighs> this world is higher than it looks. You all right, Anne? Just dandy. Well, now, I'll drop down and, and then catch you. All right, Anne. Just let yourself go. All right, but don't miss. There you are. Listen, what was that? Only the wind. Oh, I, I thought I heard someone calling. Why, Anne... You're trembling. You're telling me. 
Hugo, where are we going? Up this road until we reach the place where that missing gardener's footprint stopped. Right next to that big square tomb in the center of the park, according to Commissioner Williams. Mm Mm-hmm. That's the Greystone Mausoleum. All that remains of old Caleb Greystone, the philanthropist, lies within it. And that's the statue of old Caleb himself standing on the roof of the tomb. Oh, how nice. I hope you realize that William Marsden and Joe Donetti walked along this same road at night and bade... <gasps> What's wrong? I felt a cold hand on my face. That isn't a hand. It's a leaf on the end of a twig. Poor kid. You're frightened, aren't you? Who, me? I'm scared to death. I'm so scared my hair's standing on end. It's ruined my permanent. Oh, Hugo. What is it, Anne? That statue on the top of the mausoleum. The statue of Caleb Greystone. Yes? Well, what about it? It moved. What? Now, now, wait a minute, Anne. Hugo, I... I tell you, it moved. I saw it lift one of its arms and, and turn its head in the moonlight. Now, now, Anne, it's just that you're on edge. What you saw was a mirage brewed out of moonlight and your own imagination. That statue's made of stone. Stone statues don't move. Come on, we leave the road and go down this hollow. Well, here we are. Here's the tomb. And here's the nutty's footprints, just as the commissioner said. They're pretty faint, but... Wait a minute. What is it, Hugo? Look up at that statue of Caleb Greystone. Up there on the mausoleum roof. What about it? Well, when we saw it on the other side of the hollow, it faced toward the road, didn't it? Why, yes. Now it's facing away from the road. And it did move, Hugo. It did move. More than that, Anne. While we lost sight of it down in that hollow... It turned completely around. The strange phenomenon of the restless statue intrigued Hugo Carter at no end. Like a hound after his quarry, he scrambled to the roof of the mausoleum and made a thorough examination of both the statue and the roof in the moonlight. He reported his findings to Police Commissioner Williams, and the next morning, in the light of day, they revisited the scene. You two up there better be careful. That roof's slippery. Oh, we'll be all right, Anne. Here, Commissioner. Watch what happens when I grasp this statue. Uh Interesting, Hugo. It turns loosely on that upright bar. Yes. And I've no doubt that old Caleb Greystone is turning down below in his tomb at this sacrilege we're committing on his image. You know what, Commissioner? What? This statue isn't marble through and through. It's merely a marble surface on a light aluminum base. A man could lift it right off this support and walk off with it over his shoulder. Yes, yes, he could. Not, not that it proves anything. But these scratches on this polished stone roof, May, almost looks as though they led to the door of the crypt on the other end of the roof. It's hard to tell. I tried the door of the crypt last night. It was locked. Well, it's still locked. Hey, it's a massive tomb. Big enough to take care of 20 dead millionaires. Yes, you'd think old Caleb Greystone would be pretty lonely down there. And his condition would be lonely anywhere. Well, you go. Where do we go from here? Let's have a talk with the park superintendent, Commissioner. His office is over there on the left. Maybe he'll be able to throw a little light on the proceedings. As the old saying goes, you never can tell. Well, Mr. Andrews, this is Hugo Carter at the criminologist. And his special assistant, Miss Smith. How do you do? Mr. Andrews, how do you do? Oh, yes, I've heard of you. How do you do? As uh, superintendent of the Greystone Park, Mr. Andrews, we thought you might give us a little information on that tomb. Always glad to help the police, Commissioner Williams. Ah, thank you. Now then, uh, has that statue of Caleb Greystone always faced the road? Why, yes, as far as I know. It doesn't now, Mr. Andrews. You can see for yourself through the window. Why, bless my soul, you're right, Mr. Carter. Well, how do you suppose that happened? That's what we hope to find out. Interesting idea to build a statue of yourself and put it on your own mausoleum. Mr. Greystone had it made in memory of himself as a reminder to the public that he had converted his private estate into a park for their benefit. Mm-hmm. Somewhat of an egotist, huh? And from what the newspaper files say, eccentric. 
They practically accused old Caleb of dealing in black magic and selling his soul to the devil. Well, I understand the whole family was rather peculiar, Mr. Andrews. Well, yes, I suppose it's true. There were all sorts of rumors. Old Caleb was the eldest son, and he hated the rest of his family. Cheated them out of the family fortune, they say. It's said that he drove his own brother Arthur into poverty. Yes, yes, I remember the case. Arthur Greystone disappeared. Bureau of Missing Persons never did locate him. Mr. Andrews, that mausoleum out there is a pretty massive affair. Is old Caleb the only one buried there? Yes. As I said, he hated the rest of the family. He specified in his will that only he was to be buried there. That wasn't very hospitable of him. So old Caleb has that whole place all to himself, huh? What are you getting at, Hugo? Yes, that's what I'd like to know, too. Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. It's just that these cases of abnormal psychology interest me. Yes, Commissioner, they interest me no end. Come in. Oh, hello, Anne. Hello, Hugo. Relaxing at the piano, I see. Yes. Would you like me to stop? No, I like that melody you're playing. So do I. You know, music brings a certain clarity to the jumbled mind. It resolves things. It's a mental lullaby. Where have you been, Anne? Down at police headquarters. Poor Commissioner Williams. Why poor Commissioner Williams? Every newspaper in town is clamoring either for a solution to this great stone park mystery or a new police commissioner. Yes, I know. It's a pity. You know, Anne, Frank Williams is not only a gentleman, he's our friend. I think the time has come for us to try and crack this case. The time has come, all right, but how? Well, we've seen the outside of Caleb Greystone's tomb. It might be interesting to have a look at the inside. The inside? Yes. I've got an idea that's where our solution lies. But, but how are you going to get in? That door of the crypt on the roof is locked tight. <laughs> well, Anne, if I may boast a little, I have a certain skill with burglar tools. Yes, I know, but you can't go there in broad daylight and burglarize somebody's mausoleum. I don't propose to go there in broad daylight. You mean we're going tonight? I mean I'm going tonight. I'm taking you home right after dinner. Oh, no, you don't. You need someone to hold your flashlight. And besides, I'm just mad about Marceline. Oh, it's a lovely evening. And outside of this storm, it's just as black as... Oh, look out, Anne. This stone roof is slippery. Careful now. The door of the crypt is right over here. Now keep your flashlight trained right on this lock. But wait a minute. How did that happen? How did what happen? Well, the door of the crypt is unlocked. Unlocked? Yes. Somebody's been here ahead of us. Oh, dear. It's awfully dark down there. What are we going to do now? We're going inside. But... There may be someone in there. Well, I'll find out. You wait out here. Oh, no, Hugo Carteret. I'm not going to stand out here alone. I'm going in with you. Have it your own way. We'll take this hammer with us. They come in handy. Careful now. There are stairs leading down into the crypt. You stay close to me. Hugo, I'm practically hugging you to death right now. Oh, it's cold in here. Well, it's dry at any rate. It's dark as pitch. Can't see a thing. Here, Anne, you take the hammer and let me have the flashlight. Now, let's have a look. Oh, uh, Hugo, look. There are two men lying there on the floor. They, they must be... Yes. The two men have disappeared in Greystone Park. William Marsden and Joe Denet. Are they? Yes, I'm afraid they are. Oh, poor devils. Nobody would think of looking for them in here. How? How were they killed? They've got deep red marks around their throats. Typical of some kind of strangling cause. Oh, it's horrible. Why were they brought here? Why would anybody want to do a thing like this? The motive, Anne, like everything else in this tragic case, was abnormal. I'm beginning to see now why. Anne, listen. 
footsteps on the roof. Someone's up there. Yes. He stopped by the creek door. Hugo, do you... Do you think it's the restless statue? Perhaps. I do know it's the killer. Annie's coming down the steps. Put out that flashlight and flatten yourself against the wall. <laughs> Good evening. Oh, come now. I know you're in here. I can see in the dark better than you think. I have eyes like a cat. I saw you coming through the trees. I left the crypt door open for you. You walked right in, you fools. You walked right in. Who... Who are you? Why, my name is Arthur Greystone. This is the Greystone tomb. I live here with my friend. So you killed these two men? Yes, it was lonesome here. I wanted my brother Caleb over there in the casket to have company. He wanted to sleep alone in this big, beautiful mausoleum. It was so selfish of him, so selfish. But now he has two others to sleep with him. <laughs> and soon he'll have four. You took the statue of your brother off the supporting rod, didn't you, Arthur? It was light enough to carry. You hid it here in the tomb and posed as your brother's statue. In the dark, your victims couldn't see that the statue was alive. You dropped a cord around their necks as they passed below. <laughs> You're very clever, my friend. No, I wouldn't move if I were you. I have the strangling cord here in my hand, and I'm very good at using it. Why did you do all this? My brother Caleb cheated me in life. Drove me into poverty. Then he tried to cheat me even in death. He built this tomb and willed that only he would sleep here. This is your idea of revenge. Filling his tomb with sleeping companions. Yes, I waited years to get even. <laughs> Caleb wanted to be alone, but now he'll never be alone. He'll never be able to realize his dying wish. Well... This talk has been very pleasant. Yes, indeed, but now we must get to work. What? I'll take you first, young lady. Please don't try to resist. I assure you I'm very strong. And really, I don't want to make you suffer. Look out, Anne. No, no, no. I can't to blame you with your uh, first sight with you. No. You fool out of control. I got you in my bare hands. Oh, yeah. I'm stronger than you do here. You're not trying to this way. Oh, nice work, Anne. You handle a hammer like a carpenter. Oh, Hugo, I, I'm afraid I killed him. No, no, you just stunned him, that's all, Anne. I'll tie him up in his own cord in a moment. But first, let's have a good look at him with his flashlight. Lift that white hood of his, will you, Anne? Hugo, it's Tom Farrell, the gardener. <laughs> And so ended the case of the lonesome corpse, and another chapter in the memoirs of Hugo Carteret. Arthur Greystone had disappeared, only to reappear close to his brother's mausoleum as Tom Farrell, the gardener, a convenient alias. And the city of New York breathed a certain relief when this murderer, obsessed and poisoned by his macabre idea of revenge, finally went to the chair. <laughs> Mystery weaves a spell of strangest fascination, charging the mind with doubt and fear. For mystery is a strange companion, a living memory. In the haunting hour. Ventures is the home for spooky content and spooky merchandise on the web. Check it out today at SpookyVentures.com. And remember, always keep it spooky.